picture this, you're working your ass off on your assignment. You hit a flow, time passes. Your design is finally shaping up into something you're happy with, something you think that your client will be happy with. Clicks, scribbles, and overusing the undo button have brought you to the imminent conclusion of your project. You pushed your last pixel, you're finished, you're done. Not really. Now you've gotta sell it. <laughs> Kevin, the work should sell itself. Yeah, okay, sure. I've heard that too. I've also witnessed some of the most kick-ass, award-worthy creative work miss out on ever becoming real. Killed in round one, never to be produced. Nobody saw it. But you never know. Maybe that idea is out there somewhere, flying around in good old idea heaven. Smiling, laughing, carrying on with all those other good ideas and awesome designs. Creating smart and beautiful work is the first task of being an art director. Now, selling that work into ever seeing the light of day is task numero dos, which means yes, selling your work is arguably just as important as making it. So today, we're gonna talk about that, presenting work effectively as an AD. From how to overcome nerves and getting into the right headspace to building out your presentation and, well, presenting said presentation. And we'll probably throw some random tips in along the way. I don't know, maybe not, but possibly. Tip one, your clients, the people you will be presenting to are just regular people like you, like me. For the first couple years of my career, I didn't see it that way. I over glamorized the client. They absolutely terrified me. I entered every presentation completely shook, worried of being judged, criticized, or ridiculed. You know, the perfect mixture for unwavering confidence. The best way that I can put it is that in my mind, they were like brand royalty sitting in office chair thrones, ready to be the judge and jury as I, a gesture of an art director, juggled my advertising concepts in front of them in hopes of being worthy. It wasn't until later that I realized that clients just want exactly what you want, to create good work, work that will be successful, making you not the target of a potential creative beating, but rather a brand partner, a teammate, someone who is simply bringing a perspective to the table, which all in all lessens the pressure of what a creative presentation even is. A creative presentation is not a performance, but simply a discussion over a common goal where you get to start the conversation by showing your initial thoughts and ideas. You're thinking, cool, Kevin, nice philosophy. I feel 1% better. I'm still nervous as hell. Maybe you're shy, you're introverted, or you're just worried about messing up. That's normal. Let's overcome it. When you think of a good presenter, there are certain attributes that come to your mind based off of presentations that you've seen. And that criteria starts to become what we judge our own presentations against. Maybe you believe that a good presenter is poised, funny, or uses really big, smart sounding words. Wrong. Tip two, do not try to replicate or emulate somebody else's presentation style. You don't need to be overly passionate, hilarious, dramatic, boisterous, calm and collective. You just need to be you. Knowing how you best communicate, how you talk to people in normal conversation is the best place to start when crafting your own presentation style. Trust, authenticity is the easiest way to connect with your audience. It's the most natural and effective way for others to relate to and take in the information you're putting down. But even after you find your voice, you might have some nervousness about presenting. The best way to shake nerves is simple. It's to know the information. And when I say no, I do not mean memorize. I would actually do everything in your power not to rely on memorization. We all know that risk. That risk of creating a strict structured script that can come toppling down and throw you off if you forget one piece of information. Hello, I'm calling from room 252 and I'd like to order a sandwich. Hello, I'm calling from, okay, I can do this. I can do this. I'm a sandwich. To truly familiarize yourself with the information, try to talk about your work in completely different ways. Keep talking about the same designs, the same concepts, without using the same words and sentences. If there are any talking points you want to make sure you hit on, write those down and do your best to prioritize them when practicing. In short, it's vastly more important to know what you want to say rather than how you want to say it. When practicing this flexible and ever-changing presentation, try to speak confidently and relaxed. You know your stuff, you worked on it. Now you've just got to talk about it, clearly, concisely, and effectively. But how can you practice making sure that happens? Here's an exercise. We'll call it watch and listen. Set up your phone and record yourself presenting your creative. Then watch it back with the sound off first. 
How is your body language? Do you seem confident? Do you look comfortable? Then listen to it back without looking at the screen, only focusing on the auditory components of your presentation. Are you clear and concise? In what areas do you kind of sort of start to ramble a little bit without knowing exactly where you're going or how you want to end the things you're talking about and trying to convey to the person that you're talking to in a way that they will hopefully understand after you say it? Did you check off on everything that you wanted to say? Try it a few times. Keep practicing. You'll start to learn how to fast track the things that you want to say about your work and improve on how to express them. Your presenting comfortability will only improve the more presentations that you do. So go easy on yourself for the first 10, 20, 50 of them. Another thing that will help you feel a hell of a lot more comfortable is your Keynote, Google, or PowerPoint presentation deck. A series of slides that will keep you focused and will give you and your audience a nice visual aid to follow. The purpose of your actual presentation deck is to give your audience a linear, easy to follow narrative that takes your client on a journey through your thought process and proposed solutions. The goal is to get their heads nodding, selling them on the creative before they even see it. When creating your deck, consider the big picture and what you're trying to accomplish with the client's goals and business objectives in mind. Your deck organization will look a little something like this. The ask. This defines the overall assignment. Grounding the presentation in the problem in which you as the creative were tasked on solving. The strategy. The research and insight that led you to how you approached the assignment. It provides the reasoning behind why you did the things that you did. It gives more assurance, a better shot, that your ads will be successful, that the client's goals will be met. It takes more than beautiful design to sell your work. It takes a thought out strategic direction. And next, is the work. But before you show your concepts and ad options, you should start with a lead-in, a series of statements that set up your work. For a campaign, your lead-in will end on a key visual, the overall look and feel of your concept. It simply gets across your idea in a single slide. After your KV, you will show a series of executions, how you brought the idea to life through different ad mediums. For more specific projects with a single deliverable like a print ad, you'll just show the work itself. Normally, you should present around three options to choose from. But another tip, never present shit you don't like. Don't show a design that you hate just to hit that magic three number. And don't delete a concept if you have four stellar ones. The recap, show a quick snapshot of your different options. This is the slide that helps the client compare, contrast, and ultimately make a decision. That way they don't have to flip back and forth through your deck. The conclusion, last but not least, a quick thank you, a logo, parting thoughts to tie everything up in a nice little bow. Deck tip rapid fire. Most slides should be relatively clean and easy to go through, but try to provide additional notes throughout that might be needed for context when your presentation inevitably gets passed around internally to people who are not in the presentation. Put some real time into the design of each slide. Don't just slap your creative on a page and call it a day. Present your work in the best light. I mean, think about it. What if you painted a beautiful painting and then put it in a super ugly frame? Take pride in your art. Go easy on how much content you put on a single page. One focal point per slide if possible. A page of information vomit can quickly lose the focus of your audience. Use high resolution photography. You're a communication arts professional. Keep your visuals at top quality. Create a consistent template, but don't be afraid to break the design slightly if there is a better way to showcase the information on a particular page. All right, one more section to go. Thanks for hanging in thus far, though this part is kind of important. The part on the actual presenting. As the presenter, your goal is to communicate the work clearly, concisely, and compellingly. To do that, we're gonna tip it out one more time. If you catch yourself rambling, try to transition into the next point by having your key talking points at the ready. Think of the single most important thing you want them to take away. State it and move on. When talking about your designs, explain why you did things over what you did. They can see the creative with their eyes. They can see the art, the copy, the colors that you used. How can you paint the rest of the story through the things they can't see? Why you made the choices that you made? Remember who you're speaking to. You would probably present your work a little bit differently to a room full of high school students than you would with your client's marketing team. They just care about different things. Speak to the work through a lens that they can appreciate and benefit from. Do not hesitate when the client asks which option you prefer. Have a strong recommendation going in and be confident in your opinion. Show your ability to choose and champion your creative, but also be ready for and respectful of differing opinions. Don't get defensive. 
explain your rationale to your recommendation and be open to further discussion. Remember, that's what a presentation is, putting your best foot forward and just listening from there. Be conscious of time. Like you, your client is busy. Try not to go over. Do your best to keep the discussion moving forward if things start to go a little off topic. Acknowledge any concerns and address revisiting them later for further discussion. And lastly, and most importantly, do not look for them to make a choice or a decision within the presentation. Encourage the opposite, for the client to take what was presented and have adequate time to sit with it, look it over, and think about what option is best for them. Presenting your art is an art in itself. Over time, you'll get better and better at easing your nerves, building smart presentations, and selling in good work. Try to put yourself in position to practice and refine your own style. I practiced explaining why I did things when showing concepts to my creative director. I practiced how I wanted to talk about my designs in internal reviews with the account team. I practiced what points I wanted to make when practicing on my own. The more you practice, the more this video will become obsolete. And I actually want that for you, that you never have to watch this video again, that you become fully confident in your own presentation skills. And if you're interested in digging deeper than a quick YouTube video, I recommend picking up the book Perfect Pitch by John Steele, the same author as Truth, Lies, and Advertising. Lots of great tips and real world examples fill these pages. And speaking of books, Shameless plug incoming. If you're at the beginning stages looking to get your start into art direction, add my book Breaking Into Art Direction into your Amazon cart as well. You know, that way you don't have to pay for shipping twice. Links to both books can be found in the video description below. All right, the only thing left for me to present is my deepest appreciation for making it to the end of the video. It means a lot and I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching and if you're already subscribed, I'll see you soon in the next one.